nationwide manhunt is underway for the suspected vigilante Aiden Pierce. Engaged in several bold interventions, Pierce has divided the city with locals praising his actions. Nine one one, state your emergency, please. Hey, I'm I'm free. Lose it. Watch Dogs is about a guy named Aiden Pierce. He's a modern day vigilante who uh, made some mistakes in his past, and those mistakes uh, bit him in the ass, hurt his family, and now he's out to find out who hurt his family, and he wants to protect his family and make sure it never happens again. My name is Kevin Short. I'm the lead story designer on Watch Dogs, and I've been on the project for since the beginning, about five years. Right at the beginning, uh, during conception, we very quickly decided that we wanted something new. We wanted new game dynamics for, for players. And that became, let's make a city that players can control. And the way you control it, that quickly became hacking. And then, of course, we all had our cell phones and we realized, well, that's the tool. That's the thing we're going to use because cell phones are everywhere. They're an inconspicuous weapon. And out of that, all our ideas grew. Watch Dog is very special in the sense that Every entertainment uh, project is based on using a fantasy. Watch Dog has this very peculiar thing is that this fantasy is reality. We are showcasing a reality people don't see usually or choose not to see. Because we all know the, the risks of using phones and being connected and having accounts and everything. But we decide not to be too cautious or not to be too worried about it. My name is Thomas Jeffro. I'm dealing with the uh, authenticity of the content and also consistency of the universe. The, the one thing we really wanted to make sure was that anything that we say you can hack in our game is not a magic power, it's not a superpower. It's grounded in some sort of reality. We've, we've found research that says, okay, this is possible. At the time when we started, some of them felt a bit near future. You know, they, they were theoretically possible, but we hadn't really seen them. We did a hell of a lot of research <laughs> on hacking. Uh, we knew rudimentary stuff like everybody, but we started looking into just all the types of hacks that are out there that we didn't even know existed. Basically, the, uh, the security and hacking community is a very open one, so there is a lot of information you can get if you look a little into it. And then we also reached out to some uh, uh, pros in the field, uh, one of those being Kaspersky Labs. What we ended up doing was we sort of showed them our game design ideas, and then uh, we sent them the full script. And basically we had uh, an, an incredible feedback from them. Uh, most of their analysts are gamers also, so they were thrilled to work with us. And they just wanted to help us get some of the language right and, so, and make sure that the tone is right and that it's being as true as possible, while also being a game that's going to be fun and exciting for players to play. When we first started this project, we zeroed in quickly on Chicago because we realized Chicago is the kind of city that would embrace uh, you know, a, a new idea like CTOS. CTOS stands for Central Operating System. It's basically a smart system. So everything in the city, the electricity grid, water, communications, it's all centralized and uh, controlled uh, through one major system. And what that does is it makes uh, commutes for citizens a lot faster. All the traffic lights are perfectly synchronized. Uh, hydro bills, all that sort of thing, uh, they pay less. Uh, and communications are a lot quicker. It has a system where uh, the police can anticipate where crimes may or may not happen, uh, which is great for the citizens, great for the cops, because they don't have to have as many people on the, uh, on the streets. They can just react much quicker. It's also great for somebody like Aiden Pierce, who can hack into this system and uh, take advantage of that. I think smart cities are coming. I think they're, they're definitely coming, and you know, we need to be ready. People are going to try and exploit it. People always try to exploit something new, right? I and mean, we should embrace this approach of smart cities, but as we showcase, we have to be thinking about what it means also and how we can prevent anything bad from happening with those great systems. It's important to feel secure because uh, the concept of the Maslow Pyramid uh, puts security at the bottom of it. Basically, it's a basic need. You have to feel secure to be okay and to live a fulfilling life. The biggest thing we want out of this is we want players to finish the game and have a dialogue about what's going on. Because it's not really our place to say whether tech is good or bad, whether uh, uh, smart cities are, are right or wrong, but really it's something that, that we think it's important to discuss it, to talk about it, because we're moving fast. Technology is moving so fast, and it's worthwhile for us to kind of slow down and go, ho, 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 okay, what do we think about this? You know, what are the repercussions of this? Um, am I as secure as I should be? Who watched the watchdogs? I mean, who is watching those guys? Who, who will make sure that it's used right? We can't go back. 
We can't suddenly, okay, let's unplug everything and, 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 and hide in, in caves. That's our world, that's what we live in. So we just have to be smart about it and uh, put up the best protection that we can.